struggling to choose between IU584-1 and Finasteride for hair loss, uncertain about the best, strongest or safest option, stay right here because in this video I'll break down everything that you need to know. We will dive into the science, compare their effectiveness and discuss safety. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Philippe and today we are diving deep into a topic that's been a hot subject of debate and discussion in our community. This is the comparison between IU584-1 and Finasteride. These two treatments have been at the forefront of the battle against hair loss and it is time that we put them under the microscope. Hair loss, especially male pattern baldness, affects a significant portion of the population. In fact, according to the American Hair Loss Association, by the age of 35, two thirds of American men will experience some degree of appreciable hair loss. And by the age of 50, approximately 85% of men have significantly thinning of their hair. This isn't just a number. It's a reality that many of you, my viewers especially, are living with every day. In today's video, we will first explore finasteride, known widely for its role in treating hair loss. Finasteride works by targeting the hormone DHT or dihydrotestosterone, which is a key player in male pattern baldness. The science behind it is pretty fascinating, but it's the real world impact that really matters. While effective for many, finasteride isn't really without its controversies and concerns, particularly regarding potential side effects which is also something we will dive into with care and detail. Then we will shift our focus to RU584-1. This new contender in the arena of hair loss treatment works differently from finasteride. It is not as widely known or as extensively studied, but it is gaining attention for its approach to targeting hair follicles directly, potentially minimizing systemic effects. As we dissect these treatments, we will also consider the possibility of using them in tandem. Could combining finasteride and IU584-1 provide a more comprehensive solution to hair loss? It is a question that many of you have asked, and we are going to explore it with the attention it deserves. Choosing the right treatment for hair loss is a deeply personal decision. It is not just about understanding the science, it is about considering your individual circumstances, health history and lifestyle. Today we will try and aim to equip you with the information you need to make an informed decision, one that is right for you. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. In this segment, we are diving into finasteride, a name synonymous with hair loss treatment for years. Known for its effectiveness in combating hair loss and male pattern baldness, finasteride primarily works by inhibiting the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone or DHT, a hormone linked to hair loss in men. The American Hair Loss Association acknowledges finasteride as the first line of attack for all men interested in treating their male pattern baldness. It is interesting to note that according to a study in the Journal of Dermatologic Surgery, finasteride was shown to improve hair count in men after only 24 weeks of treatment, with continued improvement over a two-year period. But what makes finasteride a go-to option for many? First off, it is FDA approved and it sets its standard for the safety and efficiency. Clinical trials have shown that about 85% of men who use finasteride slow down their hair loss and 65% of them experience a substantial amount of hair regrowth, as per a report in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology. However, it is not all smooth sailing. Side effects, though rare, can occur. These may include sexual dysfunction as reported in a small percentage of users. It is crucial to consider these potential side effects when choosing a hair loss treatment. And moreover, the concept of PFS or post-finasteride syndrome has been a topic of discussion. 
It refers to persistent side effects after discontinuing the use of finasteride. The Journal of Steroid Biochemistry and Molecular Biology published findings indicating that while rare, these long-term effects are valid and a concern for some users. So why is this information crucial? It helps you, the viewer, make an informed decision. Understanding both the benefit and the potential risk of finasteride is key to determining if it's the right choice for you and your hair loss journey. In the next segment, we are going to talk about another player in the fight against hair loss, RU5841. In this chapter, we turn our attention to RU5841, a new contender in the hair loss treatment arena. Unlike finasteride, RU5841 is a non-steroidal anti-androgen applied topically, which means on the scalp, targeting hair follicles directly. Let's break down its mechanism, effectiveness, and studies that back its potential. RU5841 functions by binding to androgen receptor in hair follicles, inhibiting the detrimental effects of DHT. This competitive inhibition of the DHT binding helps reduce hair follicles miniaturization. It is a topical application, means that it acts locally on the scalp, aiming to minimize systemic side effects. However, the effectiveness of RU5841 varies based on genetics, age, and the severity of hair loss, with results ranging from halting further hair loss to actually significant regrowth. Key studies have highlighted RU5841's potential. A 1997 study using scalp grafted on mice demonstrated that RU5841 treated grafts showed more follicles initiating a second hair cycle compared to controls, which is of course indicating its positive action on human hair growth. Furthermore, a study by Uno using macaques as a model showed that RU5841 had a more significant increase in hair growth compared to finasteride without affecting serum testosterone and DHT levels. This suggests that blocking androgen receptors might be more effective than targeting the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. Unfortunately, there are no long-term studies measuring its side effects, and the information about side effects largely comes from online testimonials and existing knowledge of physiological process. Reported side effects include scalp irritation, hormonal imbalances, and some people report all kinds of different symptoms and none of them have been studied. So we don't know if it's just a nocebo effect or if there's actually any truth behind it. Given these factors, while IO5841 presents as a promising treatment, it remains a substance that should be approached with some degree of caution. In the next segment, we are going to talk about the effects of combining RU5841 and finasteride and the potential behind it. So let's take a look at the concept of combining finasteride and RU5841. Imagine them as two key players on a team. Each has their own unique role to play, yet working towards a common goal. It's kind of like playing football. You have a defense and you have an offense, and both are working together to reach the common goal of winning the game. Finasteride, a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, reduces systemic DHT levels in the body, tackling one of the root causes of hair loss. And RU5841, an androgen antagonist directly targeting the androgen receptors at the hair follicles, preventing the local effect of DHT. This dual approach is akin to a 2 plus 2 equals 10 equation in hair loss treatment. The synergy here is compelling. Finasteride will lay the groundwork by reducing overall DHT, while RU5841 fortifies the hair follicles against any residual DHT that is left in the body. This combination could potentially enhance the overall effectiveness of hair loss treatment offering a more robust defense against male pattern baldness. It is a strategy that addresses hair loss both systemically and locally. In conclusion, the idea of combining finasteride and RU5841 holds great potential. It is a strategy 
that could potentially offer enhanced benefit by attacking hair loss from multiple angles. In the next segment, we have to talk about side effects. Understanding post finasteride syndrome and IU5841's potential side effects. So now we're going to dive into a crucial aspect, often overshadowed when discussing hair loss treatment. Post finasteride syndrome or PFS and the side effects of IU5841. PFS is a range of symptoms that some users of finasteride experience even when they quit using finasteride. These side effects can include sexual, mental and physical issues as highlighted in a previous video on my channel where I extensively discuss post finasteride syndrome, its scientific basic and personal experience. If you're keen on a deeper dive into PFS, I highly recommend watching that video. I'll post a link up here for anyone interested. Now, on IU5841, unlike finasteride, its long-term side effects are not well documented due to its status as a research chemical. As I told before, the reported side effects is largely based on user experiences. They usually include scalp irritation, I get that personally, and systemic side effects like mood changes and hormonal imbalances. Remember, these are all anecdotal reports, but they indicate a need for caution when you use this product. Whether you're considering finasteride or IU5841, being informed and especially consulting with a healthcare provider is vital. Remember guys, managing hair loss is important, but so is your overall well-being. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about making the choice. Finasteride, are you 5 8 for one or just both? Deciding between finasteride and are you 5 8 for one or a combination of them is a pivotal step in your hair loss journey. Let's quickly sift through the facts to help you make an informed choice. Based on scientific data, IU5841 appears to be highly effective, especially due to its targeted action of the hair follicles. Studies like the one by Uno have demonstrated a significant hair regrowth in subject using IU5841 compared to those using finasteride. This information suggests that for many, IU5841 could be a potent option against hair loss. However, post finasteride syndrome is a real concern for those considering finasteride. While not common, its potential impact shouldn't be overlooked. As I said earlier in this video, I have made a video where I extensively cover this topic and I highly recommend that you check it out for a deeper understanding of what you're getting into. As for my personal choice, I opted for the combination treatment. My hair loss is pretty aggressive and it warranted for a more robust approach and combining finasteride systemic DHT reduction with IU5 aided for once local follicle protection seemed very logical for me. But remember, this is based on my personal experience and should not just be copied or taken as a one size fits all solution. Safety wise, Based on the available science, IU5841 seems to be the safer bet. Its localized application reduced the risk of systemic side effect compared to what we saw in finasteride. And for those of you who already are considering using IU5841, I recommend using Anagen Inc., a brand I personally use. They've been in the business for over 15 years where they've been offering quality products. Plus, if you use the code BLUEPRINT at checkout, you'll get a 10% discount on the whole store. And for finasteride, it is available through a doctor's prescription, and it is essential for you to consult with a healthcare provider before you consider starting finasteride due to its potential side effect profile. So wrapping up our discussion on finasteride and IU5841, let's focus on their potential to foster a significant hair regrowth. These treatments, each with their unique mechanisms, offer hope and possibilities in addressing hair loss. IU5841 with its direct action at the hair follicles show promising results in stimulating hair growth. Its effectiveness as seen in various studies makes it an exciting option for many grappling with hair loss. 
Finasteride, on the other hand, is a well-established player in the hair loss treatment arena, and it has consistently demonstrated its ability to slow down and even in some cases reverse hair loss for men with male pattern baldness. And for those facing more aggressive hair loss like yours truly, combining these treatments could amplify their effectiveness, potentially offering a more comprehensive solution to hair loss. This approach targets hair loss both systemically and locally, maximizing the potential for hair regrowth. Ultimately, the choice between these treatments should align with your hair regrowth goals and health profile. Stay informed, consult with a healthcare provider and choose the path that suits you the best. My name is Philippe and this is just me creating a blueprint for hair loss. If you're still watching, this is the part where you support me and you go and hit that like button down below and then I'll definitely see you in the next video.